Welcome back to Data Science for Everyone. I'm Professor Jones Roy. We are talking about programming in the context of data science. This video and the next two videos are going to cover these kind of level two foundations. And these foundations are functions, loops, and conditional statements. Let us start by talking about functions. So we'll do an overview, we'll create functions, and then we'll talk about functions with more than one parameter. If you've seen my earlier videos, you know that we have something in Python called built-in functions. Today, we're going to be focusing on user-defined functions, meaning I'm going to write the functions rather than rely on something that is already a part of the Python language. Lambda functions are basically functions that are not declared. You can think of them as anonymous functions. And we're not really going to focus on recursive functions, but I give you that image as a preview. So overview. Functions are blocks of organized, reusable code that we use to perform specific actions. In other languages, you may come across this called methods, subroutines, procedures. I'm not going to be too fussy about what you call them around me, but I will be calling them functions. The key thing about functions is they're self-contained. So they're specific blocks of code that accomplish a specific task. You can refer to those functions later on. You can use them again and again, and they're just little self-contained snippets. Some, some can be large, but the ones we'll be working with are relatively small. So why bother with functions? Why not just write our code out and add functionality in as we go? Well, once defined, we can use a function over and over and over. So if we have a function that does something very specific that took a few lines of code to write out how to tell the computer to do it, and we want to do it again, it would be nice to not have to just rewrite all that code. Or we could copy and paste, and that's relatively quick, but then our code gets really long and cumbersome. And we like to keep our code relatively tidy and easier to read. So these are our built-in functions. We use things like max, abs, min. We also use type, int, float, string, lots and lots and lots. As advertised, perfectly self-contained. They execute a certain set of instructions, turn something into a list, turn something into a string, inspect the type, find the absolute value, and so on. We also don't necessarily need to know how they work, though we could. And of course, in some cases, we do want to know how they work. For our purposes so far, we're fine not really saying, like, what is it about in Python, how they use import? There are cases where you do need to know. This is not one of them. What if I need a function that's not built in? Well, we've also seen this. We can import a library or a package that has some functionality already built into it. So for example, we've been writing arrays in this course and we're using the package numpy. So import numpy as np. Now we can refer to the array functionality in numpy. Okay, what if we're feeling dangerous and we want to do something that's not a built-in function but also not part of a package? Or we don't want to import a whole package because we think we could do it relatively quickly and then we want to be able to reuse it and all that good stuff. We could create our own. Yes. Yes, yes, okay, here we go. So here is how we're going to create a function. This is one of those things that can be very simple and it can get very unwieldy very fast. So let's start simple. Here's a function. What do you think this function does? Well, I hope I've made it clear in the way I've written it, but it takes a Fahrenheit temperature and it converts to Celsius. As with much in Python, this looks more complicated than it is. This actually is just a few pieces put together to carry out this particular task. And we can break down these components. So one component here is we have a function header. That's DEF. This tells the computer that we're defining a function. There it is. We have the function name. I've named it fair to cells. You could name it Steve. You name it whatever you want. Ideally, you want a name that conveys something to do with what it does to make your life a bit easier. You know, 10 years from now, when you look back, you're like, what does the function Steve do? Oh, it converts fair to cells. That Steve used to always do. All right. So you have a name, whatever you want. It does need to be one word. You can use underscores like I have if you like. And we have a parameter. I've put in a parameter. I'm calling it temp. It could be X. It could be I. It could be parameter. It could be whatever. For example, the parameter is the thing inside the parentheses for most functions. So abs parentheses minus four. That minus four is the parameter. You'll also see it called the argument. The colon denotes the end of function header. So colon says, I'm done with the header. That's the line that has the most parts. Then we have what's called the function doc string. And it's basically optional documentation. My function would work if I left it out that describes what the function does. And it has to be in three quotes. And it's a little bit different from commenting out and adding a description. This is something that's pretty typical for functions. Then we have the actual body of the function, which in this case is the third line. And it contains the statement, tell the computer what to do. In this case, I'm asking the computer to return something, you know, produce a number, produce a result. That's my statement. So I'm going to ask the function to do something. 
right? So I've set up the function, I've described the function in a doc string, and now I'm gonna say, this is the function. So in this case, the function is return, and this is the equation for calculating Fahrenheit to Celsius. So now I can use my function by just writing in my code, fair to cells, 62, and I will get 16.6 repeating. Those of you in countries that use Celsius, tell me if that seems like it makes sense. 62 is like pretty nice out. The 16 point, you get it. All right. I can try it again. Fahrenheit to cells, that's apparently the temperature of the human body, though I read recently that that's not. Okay. Okay. I think there's more variation. 37. Is that the temperature of the human body, according to your understanding, rest of the world? Sound off in the comments. There we go. So the formula is define function name parameters, colon, doc string, statements. Can get more complicated, but keep it simple. Let's do a couple more examples. So I'm going to write a function here. I'm going to define a function, and I'm going to call it triple. And my parameter is going to be number. And I'm going to say colon. And then I'm going to say return three times that number. So now I have a function that's going to triple any number. And notice in this case, instead of using a doc string, I'm simply commenting out. I can test my function, triple seven, triple 200, triple minus 200. Looks pretty good. I could also put something in the parameter other than number. In the next cell, we've written define triple x. So I've put x in, and it works just the same. And at the end here, we see the version correctly written with the doc string. Let's do one more for good luck. All right, so define the square root of x. In previous videos, you've seen we imported packages to do that. We could also just calculate it manually each time. But in this case, let's define a function for the square root. Alrighty, and lo and behold, our function works. Hooray, hooray, ooh, what am I gonna get here? Square root of minus 64, woo wee. 4.8 something, 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 e to the minus 16 plus 8j. We're in the world of imaginary numbers. Don't worry too much about that, but uh, pretty exciting. Finally, I wanna talk about functions with more than one parameter. So we can include with our parameter more than just x. We could say x comma y. So in this case, we have define a function called percentage, x comma y, which is going to find what percent x is of y. And I'm going to return x divided by y times 100. So I am indeed going to calculate a percentage. So I can now write in things like percentage 10 comma 100 is 10. Percentage 28 out of 30 is 93. And one more example for extra, extra good luck. We can define another one. Let's call it multiplier a comma b takes in two numbers, returns their product, return A times B. Multiplier 200 minus 3 minus 600. Pretty straightforward. Again, they can get very complicated, but for now, make sure you're super comfortable with creating the ones that I've shared and try out creating some of your own with one parameter, two parameters, maybe even more than two. See how it goes. I will see you in the next video.